Welcome back to Watch Mojo, and today we're going to be counting down the top 10 White's Tree Frogs myths. No, but actually, hey, it's today. <laughs> today I am here with Barbara. I would like to address the elephant in the room, which is that I haven't uploaded in months. <laughs> I wanted to make one today where I kind of just sit down and I am genuine. Would you like to look at the camera? Would you like to address all your adoring fans? She's like, who? I've had trouble with making content in the past um, where I just don't like it. So I have decided to just sit down today and just film. I just wanna try and be more genuine, try and be myself because I know that y'all like when I do that. Um, so I don't have to put on a little little voice and you know I'm gonna try to keep Barbara here as long as possible um, I may switch out frogs but you know how frogs be I have a list here um, I didn't tell you what the topic <laughs> what we're talking about um, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 myths about white tree frogs I guess it's not top 10 it's just 10 myths that I have heard we are going to debunk and yeah so I'm gonna put on my little Zach Baggins hat, and I'm gonna debunk these little ghosties. They're not really ghosts, but you know, they're my ghosts, I hate them. We're not getting into anything super deep yet. Come on, madam. Barbie, you're so beautiful. Look at that pretty girl. The first thing that we're gonna be talking about today is high humidity. Oh, sorry, I covered you up, Barbara. Is high humidity. Now this is a big myth. I don't actually know where this comes from. These guys are from Australia. They live in cat in like cow pastures. You just you just gonna do me like that? I would go like 50 to 60 is what I keep mine at. Usually I'm around 58 ish. Um, it fluctuates obviously with the day, you have high spikes, which will be between 60 and 70 um, when you spray. Your uh, like all day average, which should be in between 50 and 60. But you do not need 100% humidity. More often than not, um, high humidity just ends in bacterial infection and that is a female dog to deal with. Barb is not out in the jungle with these tigers and red eye tree frogs and stuff. Barb's in Australia, like in your toilet. She does not need high humidity. Next, we are moving on to number two. And that is white tree frogs don't need UVB. I would like to know who the CEO of white tree frogs don't need UVB is so I can make them a fist sandwich. They do need UVB. It's very important for them. These guys can get um, metabolic bone disease. You can supplement with calcium, but you, <laughs> these guys need UVB. These guys, can they survive without it? Yes. Are they going to thrive without it? No. So use UVB. I just noticed there was a frog on here. His mustache kind of. Okay. Let's move on to number three. I stopped to take a break because Barbara was going crazy and I needed some water. So but I have Julius with me now. Uh, he was asleep, so he's a little dark green. So handling is kind of a controversial topic in the world of white tree frogs. White tree frogs are very hardy frogs um, and they can be handled. There are some conditions, any harsh chemicals, especially cleaners, bleach, anything like that. Do not handle your frogs. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Like, whenever I walk past the sink, just washing my hands, it's become a big habit. Um, and I haven't been sick in a long time. Knock on wood. Wouldn't recommend using hand sanitizer just because hand sanitizer is so potent and um, it's alcohol. What I like to do is I say um, wash once, rinse thrice. Um, <laughs> so wash with soap once and then sing happy birthday three times. There are people walking. This is a closed set. We are live. And then once you have the washing your hands down, 
um, limit handling to about 30 minutes max. Um, typically, if you're just doing a routine health check, if you're just taking them out for some bonding time like Julius and I are doing right now, um, 30 minutes is more than enough time. Now, if you're still not comfortable with that, you can use gloves. Just remember they're powderless. So, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. Um, you can use gloves, just make sure they're powderless. I can tell this is gonna be a long video because we're only at number four. Sorry, I just saw <laughs> I just saw a cute girl walk out and I was like, oh? Ooh? The bisexuality just <laughs> just leaped out of me for a second there. Sorry. Number four. Number four is a is a is a good one. Take a lot of lessons from this. We're gonna talk about cohabitation, cohabbing. Um, I don't know why I sang. Keeping multiple species together. Massive thing um, with keeping multiple species together is frogs have different toxins. For example, a white tree frog and a red-eyed tree frog have two different toxins, so they cannot be together. That don't work. The red-eyed tree frog's toxins are gonna be so much more potent and they can actually leave burns on frog skin. It's more like a chemical burn. Um, toxins, we're not talking about heat here. We're talking about literal frog produced chemicals. And these toxins also help keep predators away. So obviously a frog who is an opportunistic eater is a predator to another frog. I have Clover with me now and we're gonna move on to Number five. So, number five is the myth that frogs are not smart. White tree frogs specifically. Um, they are amazing escape artists, so if you do not, do not have a good um, roof over them or they're not locked in, they will escape. These guys are also known to remember vocal tones so they can learn their names. Um, if you've seen any of the Sticky Frogs videos, uh, whenever she calls their names uh, and they come to her, that means crickets are coming and so we will go. These guys are really, really smart. They can learn tricks and stuff. And I mean, it, they're not playing fetch, but did you just pee? So yeah, frogs are really smart. Don't underestimate your frogs. Let's move on to number six. Number six. Um, is that pinkies are a great source of food. Uh, the myth is that white tree frogs can eat them and they're super healthy. They are a super fatty food. That's not okay for white tree frogs. You have people who are like, oh, you know, I give my frog uh, a pinky and he's perfectly fine, but they won't give them a mealworm. So what is your logic here? The fact that you are unable to give your frog a mealworm, but you're going to give your frog a pinky. Just, yes, blows my mind. Even as a treat, um, there's bones in them. I am aware that in the wild, they eat other frogs and things like that, but these are domesticated frogs. They are not the same as the frogs in the wild. It's not good for them. For your pet frog that you bought at Petco, to eat a pinky mouse. Please, please, please do not, do not. It's a myth and for some reason, but it's always male breeders that are like, yes, a pinky mouse, all of my animals eat pinkies. Boys, men, boys to men, the band, please stop, get some help. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Moving on. Oh my god. Water. Number seven. Freeze dried bugs. Freeze dried bugs. Piss me off. I don't understand the freeze dried bugs. If you don't want to feed a live bug to your frogs, don't get a frog. 
Don't get an animal that eats bugs if you don't like bugs. If you're a parent and you can't stand bugs but your kid really wants a frog, don't go to the nearest pet store and pick up a frog. Freeze drying bugs provide literally no nutrients for these little guys. Get live bugs. Number eight kind of ties in with the whole freeze dried bugs myth that these can go, these frogs can go vegan. I have had a lot of people ask me if they can put their frog on a vegan diet because they do not like bugs. These guys are meat eaters. They will not get the nutrients they need. Um, their stomachs, they're just gonna constantly be throwing up, which takes so much energy for these little guys to even do. Throwing up takes a lot out of them. These guys cannot go vegan. Please, again, please. If you cannot handle live bugs or feeding bugs in general, do not get a frog. Uh, get a Euromastix or um, a tortoise, you know, something that doesn't eat bugs. Number nine is that white tree frogs um, can't really eat big things and they'll choke if you give them a bug that's too big. These guys are known in Australia as snake eating frogs. Now of course the frogs that we have in modern day America have adjusted to um, not eating snakes and only eating bugs and not eating mice and rats and all that stuff. Um, as I said before, they have evolved since they have come into the American pet trade and open their mouths super huge and they use their hands to shove food into their mouth. So um, while yes, if you give them something absolutely massive, you would not be able to take that down. But that being said, a big cricket is not going to harm your frog, especially crickets because they're kind of just crunchy. Um, so yeah, don't worry about that. They're not gonna choke on it uh, if you give them medium crickets when they need small. And finally, last but not least, definitely not least, is the myth that white tree frogs are boring. I hate this myth. White tree frogs are like, literally the most active, most personable, just most fun frogs to be with. They're like little dogs, honestly. They are the bearded dragon of the frog world. They have huge personalities. They all have unique defining traits. Every face shape is different. Every fat pad is different. Their eyes are different. Um, the individual markings they have, no one is the same. These guys, bond to other frogs. They can bond to you and see you as a caretaker. Now they don't know that you're their mommy or anything like that, but they do see you as a caretaker and someone who provides food, which they need to live. So they are very happy with that. They can't outright say, I love you. And they're not like dogs where, you know, people say they feel love the same as we do, but they definitely are very appreciative when you give them a good life. Anyone who tells you they are boring, <sighs> tell them they are wrong. Look at this. Is that look boring to you? I don't think so. We did it. I got through all 10. This is probably going to be a longer video than I wanted. If you like hearing me just kind of jabber and spit out whatever comes out of my mouth, um, feel free to subscribe and comment that you liked it. Please let me know um, if you have any feedback. All of my links for social media are going to be in the description. Obviously we have Tay's Exotic Critters where you probably came from or maybe you're a new viewer who has never seen this before. Hi, hello, welcome, my name is Tay. We noticed that we had 105 subscribers. This will tell you how long it's been since I was on here. Last time I checked this channel, we were at I think 15? No, we are at 105. Even though there were five videos on here and they all suck booty. Major booty. They're all very bad. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me grab Clover. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the froggies throughout this video. Um, of course, I had to switch them up because they can't be out for very long. Yeah, thank you so very much. Goodbye, Clover. Clover says the video is over. Um, <laughs> subscribe. Smash that like button. Thank you.
I love you. Remember that you are always loved. Thank you for being a part of our froggy family. And I will see y'all in the next one.